Okay, this is actually just going to be a pretty short presentation, just comparing what we just learned about mitosis versus, if you will, meiosis. Let's look at the two of them side by side and compare the two. So mitosis, first and foremost, it's about growth and repair of cells. Meiosis, on the other hand, it's about formation of gametes, the sex cell, the sperm and the egg, right? Mitosis occurs in the vast majority of bodily cells. Meiosis occurs only in the sex cells. Mitosis undergoes one division, while meiosis undergoes two divisions. And here's the big ticket item here. Mitosis results in two diploid, genetically identical cells, while meiosis results in four haploid, genetically different cells. So once again, comparing mitosis and meiosis, if we look at just meiosis one versus mitosis at the bottom, um, in prophase one in meiosis, we have synapses and crossing over occurring. We don't see that in mitosis. We don't see that in prophase. Look at the top again, meiosis one, metaphase one, the homologous pairs align independently at the equator, while in metaphase, in mitosis, once again, the chromosomes themselves line up at the equator. And then in anaphase one, homologous chromosomes are what separate. While in anaphase and mitosis, the sister chromatids separate. So this is really the biggest different, uh, differences between mitosis and meiosis actually happens between uh, meiosis one and mitosis. Moving on here, um, the rest here is kind of, I think, self-explanatory. We separate, everything else kind of works out the same, but at the end of the day, we end up going through telophase one in meiosis, separating to those intermediate daughter cells, and then going through the whole meiosis two again to once again, four haploid genetically different um, daughter cells, right? While at the end of meiosis, mitosis, excuse me, it's two diploid daughter cells, genetically identical to the parent cells. So I definitely need you to differentiate the differences between mitosis and meiosis. They are very similar, but they're very different um, as far as their end products and their goals. When, when, when would mitosis happen? Normal body growth, repair. When does meiosis happen? Making of sperm and egg. So here's once again, I'm using a lot of animations in this, in this module because once again, I think the visualization helps. Prior to meiosis or mitosis, DNA replication occurs. In both meiosis and mitosis, the nuclear membrane breaks down as the DNA organizes into chromosomes. In meiosis, chromosome pairs come together, or synapse, and crossing over occurs, resulting in mixing of the genetic information between the chromosome pairs. The paired chromosomes then align along the central plate of the cell and subsequently separate, one traveling to each end of the cell. In meiosis, a second division sequence occurs, resulting in four cells with half the number of chromosomes. Mitosis involves a single division sequence, resulting in two cells with no net change in the number of chromosomes. So let's think about more practically now about that meiosis and the production of sperm and egg. And I'm not going to once again go very detailed here. Spermatogenesis, by definition, the process of making sperm in males, pretty much happens continually after puberty about 400 million sperm are produced per day. So obviously there's quite a bit of meiosis going on. Oogenesis, making of eggs and females. Now here's the difference, a big difference. And during meiosis one, one egg and three polar bodies are formed. Polar bodies act to hold discarded chromosomes and um, they disintegrate. It's really, um, only the one egg that we care about. And once again, only normally one egg per month is produced, uh, about 500 during an entire reproductive cycle. So very different as far as how many sperm are produced versus how many egg and 
all the sperm identical are basically able to be used however at the end of meiosis actually only one egg and three polar bodies are formed and once again you'll learn more about all of this in anatomy and physiology but to once again kind of give you an idea here's spermatogenesis at the top making the sperm and it looks pretty much right just like normal meiosis while down here in oogenesis we only have basically the the one egg that's going to be created at the end with the three polar bodies and you can see first polar body second polar body and so forth and here we have the sperm coming in and as soon as we have that sperm that fusion of the sperm we actually have a two end we have a new diploid zygote a new organism right getting that so once again we'll get more into that into human reproduction here's a quick animation on spermatogenesis spermatogonia are the cells from which sperm cells arise the spermatogonia divide by mitosis one daughter cell remains a spermatogonium and the other becomes a primary spermatocyte the primary spermatocyte divides by meiosis to form secondary spermatocytes. Secondary spermatocytes divide again to form spermatids. The spermatids differentiate into sperm cells. Don't worry about that first mitotic division for right now. The main point of this animation, once again, is just to get the concept of, okay, the four sperm cells being made from meiosis.